Hello everybody. In this video I want to discuss post sync scripts on Gentoo Linux. Now post sync is a state that happens after Portage performs a regular sync which you can do by running emerge dash dash sync or emaint sync. Um, basically the sync process is equivalent to the apt get update with apt based systems. What it will do is it will go and it will fetch recent dist files from Gentoo tree and any overlays that you have and download them so that when you try to install a new program or upgrade your existing programs, Portage knows what versions to seek out and download. Syncing is a very common thing that you will do basically every time that you decide to upgrade your system. I do it at least once a week. And a cool thing about Portage is that you can actually specify for certain actions to happen immediately following a sync. And you do this by placing executable scripts in one of two locations, either in the Etsy, portage post sync dot d directory or the etsy portage repo dot post sync dot d directory. Any executable scripts that are placed in either of these directories will be executed at the end of a portage sync. Now before we check out actually making a script in one of these post sync directories, let's first run man portage and search for post sync dot d and we'll skip through here to find the actual information. And here in this man page, we can see the information that Portage has about this particular directory. It says this directory is for user supplied post sync hooks to be run once after all repositories have been synced. Each script is called in alphabetical order without any arguments. So that means once your Gentoo tree has been synced up and all of your overlays have been synced up, the executable scripts in postsync.d will be run one after the other in alphabetical order, and whatever they say will happen to your system. Now notice what it says here at the very end. It says they're run in alphabetical order without any arguments, meaning no information from your system state or from Portage is passed into these scripts. They pretty much have to be standalone when you run them. This is in contrast to the scripts that can be placed in the other directory I talked about, repo.postsync.d. And if you'll notice, the first paragraph here describing what it does is almost exactly the same, except here at the end it says that it will be run, that these scripts will be run in alphabetical order with three arguments. And then it details them down here. The arguments passed are the repository name, the sync URI, and the location. These three pieces of information are passed to the scripts in repo postsync.d. And so you can see how the scripts that you place in repo.postsync.d should be very different. Notably, it says here that they are run once after each repository instead of after all repositories. So whatever scripts are in repo.postsync.d will be applied to every single repository that is updated as part of the syncing process. So if you have multiple overlays on your system, or if you have a custom local repository on your system, whatever scripts are in repo.postsync.d will be run once for each one of those, whereas whatever is in postsync.d will only be run one time after all repositories have been synced. One thing to keep in mind here, it says using this information, it is possible for hooks in the repo.postsync.d directory to be run only for a certain repository. This means that because the information like the repository name is supplied to the script, you can actually filter by repository name or URI or what have you to determine whether or not the script that you're trying to execute in repo.postsync.d should be executed at all, or specifically what it should do. All right, so now that we've covered the man page, let's go ahead and navigate to Etsy Portage. And I'll ls out right here, and you can see that I have two directories here that I just talked about postsync.d and repo.postsync.d. Now, the first directory here, postsync.d, did not exist by default for me, but I went ahead and created it. However, repo.postsync.d was already here. But to begin with, before we mess with repo.postsync.d, I'm just going to navigate to postsync.d and show you that it's empty right here, and we're going to go ahead and make a very simple shell script to be executed after a sync. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and say sudo vim, and we'll just call it test script. Now it should be obvious, but every script that you put here should begin with a shebang. So I'll say bin sh, because we're just going to make a very simple script. And let's just make it echo some text. We'll say echo, hello, this is a post sync process. And then we'll say, who am I? which will print out the user that is actually executing the script. Now that is a perfectly valid shell script and we're done with that. So we can just go ahead and exit out of here. This will be very simple. It'll simply print three lines. The first two will be those echo messages and the last one will be the name of the user that executes the script. So obviously nothing too crazy there. So let's get out of there. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to make test script executable. So let's do sudo chmod 
plus x to test script. And now that test script is executable, we can actually go ahead and run sudo emerge dash dash sync and let this play out and at the bottom we should see our script run. Okay, the sync has just finished and as you can see right here just before the bottom of the output it says hello, this is the post sync process and root which was the user that ran that script. So you can see that our little test script succeeded in running. Now you can see how something like this would be very useful if there's some activity that you need to do every time that a sync is performed or perhaps between syncing and upgrading, this is an ideal way to do it. Any valid shell script that is executable and is placed within postsync.d will run so you can do basically anything from postsync.d that you might need to do. Now before in this video I also want to talk about the repo.postsync.d directory which as you can see I have navigated to. As I said this directory already existed for me and in fact there was an example script in here already. So let's go ahead and open that example script and see what's in it. Now this is a pretty cool file hopefully it exists on your system too and it will actually walk you through how the scripts in repo.postsync.d should be constructed and what you should do with them. As you can see here, information about the arguments are available right here. The repository name is the first argument followed by the sync URI, then followed by the repository path. And that's a lot of useful information. Keep in mind that every single script that's in here in repo.postsync.d will be run for every single repo, every single overlay that you have added to your system. Anything you add with Layman, any kind of custom repos that you have available that are updated during a sync process, will have whatever scripts are in here run on them. Now this this example script that was built in here doesn't do too much. All it does is first it makes sure that the repository name is a string of non-zero length and that basically means that the repository has an actual name and then provided that that is true it goes on to echo out some information about the repository. And then down here the only uh, notable useful thing it does is it says Gentoo comes with pre-generated cache but the other repositories usually don't generate them to improve performance. And then down here this will generate the cache for any given non gentoo tree repository. Now it's important to note that this script gives a really good example of the useful things that you can do provided the three arguments that repo.postsync.d scripts are passed. Namely, it checks the repository name to make sure that it's not Gentoo, which is just going to be the default Gentoo tree. And then it only performs operations on those non Gentoo tree repositories. So if you start making a lot of scripts to go into the repo.postsync.d directory, that's probably something you will do quite frequently checking the repository name or the sync URI to make sure that you're performing the operation only on the repositories that you want to perform them on. All right, everybody, thank you all for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, if you need to do anything repeatedly after a regular sync of Portage, this is the ideal built-in way to do it. I've been meaning to make this video for a little while now since I'm pretty sure that it's pretty much the last topic regarding the things in Etsy Portage that I haven't actually covered yet in one of my videos. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.